So, hi again. Well, now I got a letter from Nissan a couple of weeks ago. So, and this is how it looks. There we go. I guess some other people got it, but well, I just read it to you and we'll, you know, I'll try to translate it to English. So, re recalling campaign uh, about Nissan Leafs, uh, Nissan Leaf with and then my VIN number, and then it continues. Dear Nissan customer, Nissan's quality control has found a potential problem with the lithium ion batteries um, grounding plates on certain models of Nissan Leaf. It is possible that the grounding plates, uh, after long use uh, in certain corrosion, you know, uh, corrosion, uh, well, places with high corrosion uh, could deteriorate, which will lead uh, to that the car's grounding is deteriorated. It is still totally safe to use the car uh, but there is a chance that a mechanic that is working with the battery, the chances that a mechanic working on the battery pack uh, can get electrocuted will be higher. Uh, even if none, no such cases has been reported to Nissan, uh, we are doing this voluntary service campaign as a precaution. Uh, uh, the problems does does not affect. Uh, the car's battery or performance. We urge you as fast as possible to contact your nearest uh, authorized Nissan uh, garage uh, or Nissan sales place to book a time to con check your car. Uh, if the garage deems your car that your car has to undergo this procedure, uh, work and labor and parts will of course be without cost. To make it easier for you, uh, we would like you to take this letter with you when you go to your Nissan garage. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so basically, there are. Well, the thing is, I filmed the whole process. I asked them at Nissan, you know, can I film this? So I'll we'll just go through it here, and we'll you'll understand what I what what the problem is about. So here we see the battery has been disconnected, uh, so that no power is going through it any of the electric components. And this is actually the connector that's in there uh, to give it power. And they basically just take it out and then you, they put a dummy in there so the car won't you know, leave any, it won't shock you while working on it and, and working on the high component battery. So a uh, high voltage battery. So here we see the plastic shroud uh, that's under the battery and the, the grounding plates that Nissan says you have to replace. On cars that are running in corroded corrosion sensitive areas so here we see one of the grounding plates and uh, you know it's just a question of removing two bolts and then it will come out of there that's about it so here we see one of the bolts just sticking out this is the way the bolt actually looks of the bolt the grounding plate looks as you can see it's decently corroded and uh, on the right side there you can see this pretty shiny and that's how they look new. I actually forgot to take you know film the place when they were off. Uh, so two of these plates you know, on either side needs to be replaced. So here's the one on the first side being put there. And you can see it's shiny and new. I don't know if there's any coating or anything on it that makes it stand out better with corrosion. He didn't know about that uh, when I asked them the mechanic. So here the car is on something called a dolly. He just had to move the car a little bit due to the fact that the grounding plate on this side of the car, one of the bolts had actually snapped off, snapped off when he was taking, you know, trying to get it out. It was so stuck in place due to corrosion. So he had to move the car a little bit to gain access better to it, trying to remove what's left of it. And these yellow things here, they're just precautions that you're not supposed to go in there. That's what he told me. Uh, this is him just grinding away on the s snapped off bolts and there's no head on the bolt so he just has to try to get a grip on it. Didn't really get it out so he realized he had to you know, screw it out and he just drilled, drilled through it and drilled until it came out and he drilled and drilled and you know, did some more sanding on it to try to get it, get it smooth the surface and eventually he's trying to ply it up there just basically get it out of there 
Yeah, and eventually it did. This actually took a whole hour, basically the same time it took to get all the things done up until now. So here he's threading new uh, new hole due to the fact that there's no threads left where the old bolts sat. So he's just threading new hole, making new threads to be able to fit the bolts. So then the second and last grounding plate uh, just came into place and this, you know, smooth sailing once he got the bolt out of there. And then it was just a question of putting the plastic cover back under the car or under the battery. And, you know, it's just, I don't know what's there. It's just very full of holes. It still lets in a lot of dirt and grime. I guess it protects a little bit. I don't know. So after that, we just started up the car. It just worked just like it had done before. There was nothing new about it. There's nothing strange. And, you know, it worked just fine. So, yeah. So that was basically what that recall was about. And, you know, as I said in the... It took a little bit longer than he anticipated the mechanic because he had done this on, I think he said, three leaps before ours. Uh, and one of them was actually 40 kilowatt, uh, and then the other ones were basically 130, I think, and 124 too. And there was some more coming in, as he could, I didn't really know for sure, but... So, in, as it says in the letter, this seems to be affecting, this recall seems to be affecting uh, Nissan Leafs of all ages, uh, but the common factor on them is that they're, they've been driven in what they would call corrosive environments, basically environments with not necessarily snow, snow and water, but snow and ice, but more than snow and ice, and also the salt that tends to be used on these kinds of roads to melt the ice on the road. Like in Sweden, where I live, we, d we use the salt, but if you get further up north in Sweden, then we don't use the salt on the roads because it's more of a compact snow on the roads, so there's really no, not that much ice under it, and the ice doesn't really show itself. It's just snow, and that snow itself isn't really that slippery. It's the ice. If you get, like, really cold weather, then you get a little bit warmer weather, and the snow goes away, and there's just ice on the roads, and that is recently hard to drive on so yeah as i said this recall seems to be affecting cars in these kinds of regions and i don't know if they've done it only only europe or if it's also cars in the united states i don't really know but this is what they've done and it's not really it's not really anything hard you just go there you leave the car for one two two hours and <coughs> then it's done you pick it up and there's no I means you don't really see a difference before this or af after the they change these grounding plates but, well, let's, that's all for now, I guess. And we'll see if there's anything more that pops up with the leaf, you know, when it comes to warranty repairs or whatever. But for now, thanks for watching and bye.